Good evening, everybody. Hello, good evening, teacher. Good evening, good evening sir. Hi, welcome. Everybody, welcome once again. Let's begin. Um, I'm going to share the screen with you right now. So, give me a second. Right here. Okay, there it is. Everybody, welcome. Let me just adjust the screen a little bit. Yeah, it looks better. Okay, um, once again, here we are, okay? This is the last week of this level, so let's get started. As usual, first things first, um, I'm going to call your names from the attendance list. So when you hear it, please let me know by saying here or present or hello, just greet me or just let me know you're there, okay? Okay, here it is. Let's see, Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez. Hello, teacher. Hi, Ana Cecilia, welcome. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present, teacher. Welcome. Carlos Roberto Dominguez. Present teacher. Welcome. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Damaris Merari Marroquín Rivas. Present teacher. Welcome. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Elisa Arelí López Campos. I'm here, teacher. Welcome. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Good evening. Torres. Hello. Hello. Elmer Mauricio Sala Rojas. Hello, teacher. Hello. Erika Marisela Morales Cordero. Hi, I'm here. Hello. Gabriel Antonio Nájera Martel. Gabriel Antonio Nájera Martel. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Present. Welcome. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Present. Welcome. Juan Eduardo Moral Rodríguez. Juan Eduardo Moral Rodríguez. Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. Present. Welcome. Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespin. Present. Welcome. Rocino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present. Welcome. Sandra Yanet Vázquez Cortés. I'm here. Welcome. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespin. I'm here, teacher. Welcome. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Sorry. Uh, Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Gabriel Antonio Nájera Martel. I'm here. Welcome. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Present teacher. Welcome. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Okay. Let's begin. Everybody, take a look. Welcome. Once again, this is Advanced English 1, and that's me, Ivan Donyang, at your service. This is session 13, and today is September 18th of 2023, or 2023, as you prefer. So um, what are we going to do? We're going to cover, well, in this week, we're going to cover, 
<clears throat> sorry, we're going to cover uh, session four, and also we're going to do the final test, okay, the final exam that is at the end of this level. So let's begin. All right, here we go. Um, we have this early birds and night owls, okay? So what is that, early birds and night owls? This uh, refers to a saying in English. Uh, people uh, can be divided, we can say informally, of course, in two different categories. And one is early birds and night owls. What is an early bird? An early bird is a person who likes to get up early to be productive during the day, especially during the morning. What is a night owl? A night owl is a person who works best at night, okay, who feels like more productive or in general feels better at night and therefore they dedicate, uh, you know, uh, their energy, you know, to doing whatever it is they do at night. So uh, that's, that's the way it is. So you have early birds and night owls. If you had to choose, and this is an open question, okay? If you had to choose, how would you classify yourself? Would you be an early bird or would you be a night owl? I think I'm more of a night owl. Okay, honestly with you, okay, being honest. Okay, so what what about you? Are you an early bird? Do you like to do, you know, do you work best in the morning or are you a night owl? Do you work best in the evening, especially, you know, the late hours of the night? What do you think? I'm gonna ask some people individually here. Okay, let's see. Ah, Elizabeth. Um, I'm early bird. You're an early bird. Okay. 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 Sounds good. So you work best in the morning. Okay. Sounds great. And anyone else who wants to share? Uh, in this case, what do you consider yourself to be? To be? Are you an early bird or a night owl? Madeline? And then Gabriela. In my, in my case, I'm a morning person. So you're an early bird? Yes, I'm an okay. early bird. Okay, good. Gabriela wanted to participate. How about you, Gabriela? Yes, I am an early bird too. An early bird too. Is are there any night owls here in this in this? By the way, thanks for your participation, Gabriel. Yes, I consider myself to a night owl because I used to work at night before, so that's why. And okay. I rather to sleep in the morning. <laughs> you rather sleep in the morning. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> ah, well. I think I'm a little bit of both in the end. I'm an early bird and night owl, but, but if I have to be honest with you, just like everyone else, uh, I have trouble getting up in the morning sometimes. It's, I have to set up my alarm, okay? And uh, and I also have to put it away from my bed, you know, on, 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 on a, well, right now I'm working on this desk and I usually put it on the desk, you know, my cell phone is on the desk because if I sleep next to it, I just deactivate the alarm every five minutes. Okay, so and 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 I never get up, so that's why I put it away from my bed, so that's when when the alarm goes off in the morning, I have to stand up, right, and I have to go there and turn it off. Okay, so uh, that way I make sure I you know get up you know on the first uh, alarm. Gabriela, I consider myself a night owl too because I work in, as a developer, soft, software developer, and oh, nice. And at night, I I feel like at night is when my creativity comes, and I work uh, without interruptions and and stuff like that. Sounds good. Okay, so basically, uh, what you're saying is that you prefer the night because it's interruption free. Okay, sounds good. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. See, see, in it th that way, it sounds like uh, like a good idea to work at night. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, software developer. Okay. That that's that's impressive. Okay. Um, well, um, thanks everybody for your participation. This is uh, early birds and night owls. This is listen A. It's about time. What's your best time up day? And we have four testimonials here by Teresa from South Africa, Fausto from Brazil, Mieko from Japan, and Richard from Canada. So I need a few volunteers. First, a lady, please, to read the first testimonial by Teresa from South Africa. Elizabeth, please. Thank you. Teresa, South Africa. As soon as 
I'll get up in the morning. I race off of the gym. After I finish my workout, I head to the office. Mm -hmm. I always get there before any of my, no sé cómo se dice, colleagues arrive. Uh, colleagues. Uh, colleagues arrive. I suppose I'm morning person. Okay, thank you. So Teresa says, as soon as I get up in the morning, I race off to the gym. After I finish my workout, I head to the office. I always get there before any of my colleagues arrive. I suppose I'm a morning person. You know, there is a person I know, uh, well, at my workplace, okay, because, you know, this is not my only job. I also have another job in the, during the day. <laughs> this is my evening job, okay, but I have a daytime job. It's a different job. But there is a person at my daytime job that says that she goes to the gym at two in the morning. I don't know if I should believe it, but she says she goes to the gym at two in the morning. When I asked her, how many people are there at the gym at two in the morning? And she says, it's just me and one instructor. Oh, come on. So she's a really, you know, early bird apparently okay and 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 she's usually the first person to arrive at you know at the office right there so um i don't know how she does it i really have no idea where she finds the energy to go to the gym at two in the morning and i don't know if it's true okay i don't know if i should believe it but uh that's what she says okay um she goes to the gym at two in the morning okay go figure Anyway, do you have any questions about the vocabulary from the first testimonial from, by Teresa from South Africa? Any questions about the vocabulary, the expressions, anything? Madeline. What does mean race up? You hurry. You, you go directly to one place, okay? Usually quickly. Mm -hmm. So she like says... Like to move. Yeah, you move quickly. You go quickly to one place. That's it. That's what. Mm -hmm. So as Thank soon you. as I, you're welcome, she says, as soon as I get up in the morning, I race off to the gym. So she gets up and then bye bye. Okay, she goes to the gym immediately. She races off to the gym. Any other questions about the vocabulary? Anything else that is not entirely clear? <clears throat> Carlos. Teacher. Yes. The minute colleagues. Your colleagues are the people you work with, your co-workers. Those are your colleagues. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, teacher. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Byron. No, it's for reading. Same question. And, ah, you want to read. Okay, cool. Okay, can you help me read yeah. uh, Fausto's testimonial? Fausto from Brazil, please. Okay, Fausto Brazil. Ever since I was a kid, I've had trouble getting up early, so I guess I am late racer. Until I be had my coffee, I am such a grouch. a grouch. I'm not very approachable. Right after I wake up. <laughs> yeah. Fausto from Brazil says, ever since I was a kid, I've had trouble getting up early, so I guess I'm a late riser. Until I've had my coffee, I'm such a grouch. I'm not very approachable right after I wake up. Uh, thank you, Byron, for reading. Um, any questions about the vocabulary? I believe there are questions here. So how about this one? Who has questions about the vocabulary? Mm -hmm. Any questions? If you have questions, please raise your hand. Can't believe you don't have questions. Rufino, and then Elmer, and then Madeline. Keep your keep your hands up, what, or otherwise I will forget. What, okay. what do you mean grouch? A grouch is a person who is like angry. A grumpy uh, person. Synonym. Mm. Synonymous. Okay, yeah, kind of like that. So that's a grouch, it's a grumpy person. Okay, 
also at, at, at my workplace, I know someone who is such a grouch in the morning. Okay, it's also a lady. She's like usually very angry. So when she approaches in the morning, I just go like, hi. Okay, and I disappear because she's usually angry. Okay, Elmer. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, DJ. Yo creo que era la misma. Approach, approach. Approachable. No, that's a different, that's a different one. She, he says, I'm such a grouch. I'm not very approachable right after I wake up. Approachable, this is a word that you will not hear very often, honestly, in the English language. But that means that this is a person that you don't want to get close to after he wakes up. Approach means to get close to something or get close to someone. So an approachable person is someone you can get close to. So why is it that he is not approachable right after he wakes up? Because he's grumpy. He's, he's angry, right? You go like, hey, Fausto, how are you doing? Yeah, whatever, man. Okay. So uh, he's, he's probably angry in the morning. That's why he's not approachable. He's not a person you want to get close to in the morning. Just like that other coworker that I'm talking about. She's usually very, you know, grumpy in the morning. She's not an approachable person. Anyway. So. Um, okay, teacher. Thanks. You're welcome, Madeline. What does mean late riser? Uh, what does late riser mean? Uh, late riser is a person who gets up late. That's a late riser. So uh, probably the person wakes up early, but doesn't get up until probably one or two hours later. So it's, it's a late riser. Some people. Uh, when they have the opportunity, they 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 get up like at at eight, nine, ten in the morning. Sometimes on Sundays and stuff. Long time ago, when I was a teenager, I I used to, I used to be the friend of a girl who who was a late riser, and and every Sunday she got up like at eleven in the morning. <laughs> I was like super late, okay. And sometimes I told her like, hey, let's do something let's go you know go hiking or ride a bike or so on sunday morning and she said like nah 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 <laughs> that was always the case any other questions about the vocabulary no more questions thank okay. you teacher you're welcome madeline so what about Miko from japan i need a volunteer to read this if it's a lady it's probably better because she's a lady too so um any anyone? Mm -hmm. Okay, Madeline. And then Gabriel's gonna help us with the last one. I'm a power napper while I take my lunch break at work. I often sneak a five minutes, a five minutes nap at my desk. After I have a little sleep. I feel great the rest of my of the day. Yeah, totally. Thank you, uh, Madeline. So she says, I'm a power napper. While I take my lunch break at work, I often sneak a five minute nap, right? A five minute nap at my desk. After I had a little sleep, I feel great the rest of the day. Do you have any questions about the vocabulary here? Any questions about the vocabulary? Yes, I have. Okay, Madeline, what's your question? And then Gabriel? What does mean power napper and a snake in that sentence? Sneak. Okay, a power power napper. There is like one thing that is, um, some people say that it works and it's something that they, uh, that is known as a power nap. What is a power nap? Power nap is a nap that you take like for, say some people say that you have to take a nap for like uh 15 to 20 minutes okay and if you take a nap for like 15 or 20 minutes either in the middle of the morning or in the middle of the afternoon it uh it makes you feel great especially if you're feeling like very very sleepy and you decide to for example after lunch or stuff you take a nap like okay just like 15 minutes they say that 15 minutes is a great time for you to take a nap. 
any uh, shorter than this and it's not effective. And if you take longer than 15 to 20 minutes, uh, the effect is the opposite. When you wake up, you feel like super tired. So some people take this power, these, I'm sorry, power naps. And a person who takes a power nap is known as a power napper. That's a power napper, a person who takes a power nap. So um, I have tried to do this before, but uh, I haven't had the best results mostly because I cannot really control when I get up or wake up, I'm sorry. So uh, it's kind of difficult. So um, what about sneak? You were asking, right? I often sneak a five minute nap at my desk. When you sneak something, it can have more than one meaning. Sneak all means to escape, to escape and nobody sees you you sneak out, okay? You sneak out of place. But also in this case, sneak means to do something that you are not supposed to do, but you still do it. For example, at work, you're not supposed to sleep. But if you sneak a five minute nap, that means that you just like, okay, five minutes, okay, five minutes here. Okay, and then you sleep like, for five minutes, then you get up, you wake up, I'm sorry. And you go like, okay, nobody saw me. Okay, everything's okay. So you're not supposed to sleep at work, but if you sneak it, you do it, even though you're not supposed to do it. That's the meaning of sneak something. We have a Thank chat you. entry. You're welcome. Uh, there's a chat entry. Power nap, Gabriela says. A short sleep taken during the working day in order to restore one's mental alertness. Huh? That's a power nap. But usually 15 to 20 minutes. So the experts say. Okay, um, again, I have tried it before, but I mean, it didn't work for me. I don't know about you, but it didn't work for me. Anyway, uh, any other questions about the vocabulary? I believe Gabriel had a question. No, you already answered. Uh, okay, question. all right. Okay, so can you help me read the last one? Richard from Canada. Sure. I don't get much done until it gets to be late afternoon. Then I usually get a spur of energy. I can concentrate best after everyone else has gone to bed. I'd say I'm I'm a real night owl. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you have Richard from Canada says, I don't get much done until it gets to be late afternoon. Then I usually get a spurt, okay, of energy. I can concentrate better, best after everyone else has gone to bed. I say I'm a real night owl. Uh, thank you, Gabriel. Uh, does anybody have questions about the vocabulary here? Elmer, do you have a question or is it just your hand? You forgot to <laughs> lower it. I don't know. Okay. Um, any questions here? Sorry, did you? <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry. It happens all the time. Okay. Don't worry. Uh, Elmer, do you have a question? <laughs> or not? No, no, no question. Okay. Who has a question? Gabriela. Uh, yes. What does part mean? A spurt is a burst of energy that you get, like, okay, some people get a spurt of energy after they drink uh, an energy drink, for example, or after they have had coffee or after they consume sugar. Although consuming sugar is tricky because you get a spurt of energy, but then like a few minutes later, you get something that is called a, uh, a sugar crash, okay? The sugar crash is quite the opposite. You feel sleepy, uh, okay? So that's a spurt of energy. A spurt is like a, a, a sudden burst like of energy. Uh, Thank Gabriela, you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, any other questions? Uh, Gabriela Sequeira? There uh, can be a spurt, a synonym of boost. A burst, yes. A burst, a burst of en a boost. Yeah, could be a boost of energy. That's another way of saying it. Yeah, totally. So uh, that's what it is. Any other questions here? No more questions? I think I've got allergies. I'm all itchy. No more questions then. Okay, so um, thank you for helping me read this. We're going to go over the next activity right here. Okay, so um, there's a little bit more. The time is right. This is also part of the starting point. Pair work, read this information. Do you agree with the advice given? We're not going to be working in pairs right now. We're going to be working individually because I'm more interested in your opinions and the opinions that you can share with the class. So when the mind and body are at their best. Okay, so this is uh, the information according to scientists. 
So when the body, the mind and body are depressed. The first one is whenever you need to study for a test, do it between 9 a.m. and noon. Apparently, according to science, okay, that's the best time for you to study for an exam. Okay, so from uh, do it between 9 a.m. and noon. So question, and, and I want you to participate here. It's a good, it's a good chance for you to uh, practice your speaking skills. Do you agree with this? Uh, do you think it's a good idea to study from 9 a.m. to noon? Uh, does it work for you? Or do you have a different, say, habit that you can share with the class? Who wants to participate? Do you think this is this is useful advice or, or just nonsense? I don't know. You tell me. Or you can simply say, what time it is best for you when you have uh, for, for you to study when you have a test I personally don't have a particular time uh, that I can say like I, yeah I, I study best from this time to this time no not really I, I don't have that but I don't know about you who wants to share nobody wants to share <laughs> anyone anyone comments anyone's comments you're welcome. Gabriela, Alejandra. Yeah, for, for me, the best time to study is like around 6 a.m. 6 a.m.? Yes. Okay. Uh, any particular reason? Uh, I, I feel more energetic when... <laughs> more energetic. You feel more energetic. Okay. You know something that I do when I have an exam? Well, not anymore because I've, I finished university many years ago. So um, it's not like I get exams very often, but uh, something that I used to do is when I was very tired and I had an exam, instead of, you know, staying up late at night studying because I could not concentrate, I went to sleep, but I set the alarm really early in the morning, like two in the morning, three in the morning. So I will concentrate much better in the early morning because I have had some sleep before, okay? That was like, uh, my technique, okay, when I was uh, completely, uh, when, when I didn't have any energy to study at night. So what about the second one? You have study languages in the early afternoon, okay, study languages in the early afternoon. So if you want to study English, probably 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m. probably is the best time for you to do it. I don't know about you, but I can't do this. I can't because right after I have I have had lunch, I feel super sleepy. That's probably my worst time to try to concentrate on anything. But this is me. This is, you know, personally, I don't like to study in the early afternoon because I get super, super sleepy after lunch. What about you? I want to hear your opinions. Is it is it true that it's 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 good for you. Well, you are all students of a language. You all study English. So in your experience, is it is it true that uh, studying a language in the early afternoon is effective or not? What do you think? If you want to participate, raise your hand. In your experience. Okay, Gabriel, thank you. Well, in my case, I think it's better to study in the morning uh, languages because, as you mentioned, um, after lunch, I I like to take a nap, <laughs> and maybe that would be one of the reasons I rather to study in the morning. That's why you prefer to study in the morning. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay, so I guess we both agree on this. <laughs> So, but according to the experts, uh, it's, it's best for you to study languages in the early afternoon. I don't know. You know, as a, as a student of languages, because I've also been a student of languages and as a teacher of the English language, uh, some of the most difficult classes are exactly in the early afternoon for the same reason, because everybody gets very sleepy after lunch. So people find it hard to concentrate anyway. What about the third one you have? Whenever you have to work with numbers, plan to do it around noon. Okay, now I am not a person who works with numbers because I'm an English teacher. I am not an accountant. I am not an engineer. I'm not an architect or any other thing that involves numbers. I can do my numbers, of course, but it's not something that I do all the time. Okay, so for 
those of you who work with numbers, maybe there's an accountant here or, or, or someone who, you know, uh, works with numbers. Uh, is it true that you probably work best around noon, you know, by lunchtime? What, what can you tell me? I don't know about your jobs. I don't know if your job involves, you know, uh, working with numbers. Mine doesn't in particular. I mean, a, a little bit, but not in particular. I'm an English teacher. So what about you? Who, who, who works with numbers here? Maybe an accountant or, 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 or a similar, you know, profession or occupation that maybe can tell us about this? Nobody? Nobody works with numbers. Okay, Carlos. Okay, Carlos. Thank you. Yes, teacher. I I I have worked in the, with number um, accounting. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, board um, audited. Okay. Yes, I I work in mass number. <laughs> is it true then? What what you have here? Is it true that 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 it's best for you to do it at noon? In your experience? Um. I don't know. I don't. I don't know, teacher. What significates so. Ah, uh, noon. Noon is twelve p.m. Lunch time. Oh no, no, no. I, I, I am not only. Only, uh, only what? Sorry. <laughs> See, only what? <laughs> no, only uh, that. Only, only that. Only that. Okay. Only yes. that. So, but my question is, Carlos, uh, is it true that it's it's good to you know do calculations with numbers at noon? Or, or you prefer not to do it at noon? Hmm. Participation ended apparently. Okay. Uh, ah, okay. I, I under I understand, teacher. Uh -huh. No much, um, no, no more, no much, uh, fully English. <laughs> okay. Okay. No problem. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, the next one is energy levels drop between two and four p.m. Before your energy levels falls, try taking a short nap. So that's the power nap we were talking about just a moment ago. Okay, um, I don't know if it's true. Usually my energy levels drop like at 1 p.m., not at 2, but that's me. Okay, question, what time in the afternoon do you usually feel most sleepy? When your energy levels drop, when they go down. Volunteers, what time in the afternoon do you find it difficult to concentrate and, and do get get something done? Madeline. After lunch, uh, 12 to 2 p.m., I sometimes feel sleepy. From from noon, from 12 to 2 p.m., okay? That's like the window period when you feel like your, your energy levels drop. Drastically. Yes, if I don't drink drink coffee my gosh i sleep on my work <laughs> okay yeah that happens sometimes it happens to me that i'm like typing something and then my eyes are like wait 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 wait, wait. and i try to continue okay gabriela okay. yeah it happens i mean it's 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 common gabriela well for me sometimes uh, taking naps gives me a headache a headache. So, yeah, a headache. Mm -hmm. So, I, I don't take naps. Mm -hmm. and I believe that all that all depends on what you what you take on, on lunch, what you eat yeah. for your lunch. So you have to. Where if you need to be more concentrated in the afternoon, you need balance or take care about what you're what you at lunch. Yeah, I agree. I agree. If you eat too much, you're bound to feel sleepy later. Also, if you this is what I understand. I'm not a nutritionist or anything. So. Uh, but if I understand correctly, if, if you eat a lot of carbohydrates, you know, at lunch, like, for example, if you have pasta, like spaghetti or something like that, um, you got to you have to be ready because you're going to be very sleepy later on. OK, especially if you have it for lunch. Uh, really? Some experts say that on the contrary, for example, if you have fish for lunch, OK, chances are you're going to be sharper okay, in the afternoon. 
I don't know. That's what I've read. Okay, but I'm not, again, I'm not a nutritionist and I don't know much about the topic. So this is not a professional advice of any form. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, totally. Gabriela, I, I agree. So what about the next one? Do something that requires concentration between 6 and 9 p.m. I kind of agree with this one. Okay, I believe that from 6 to 9, I work well. For example, um, yesterday I was preparing this PowerPoint presentation right here, and uh, I did it exactly at the time from 6 to 9. Okay, so I was like preparing this. I mean, I was preparing for the whole week, not just tonight. Okay, I was preparing for the whole week, and uh, I believe that was a that was a good time for me. That's that's probably when I feel like I have a little bit more energy, definitely more energy than in the afternoon. But uh, what do you think? Does this work for you? Is it is it good for you to do something that requires concentration between six and nine p.m.? Does it work in your case or not? Remember that there are no correct or incorrect answers here. It's all about opinion. It's all about experience. So if you want to participate, please be my guest. Does this work in your personal experience? Anybody? No more testimonials, it seems. Okay, well, let's move. Okay, Elizabeth. <laughs> In my experience, mm -hmm. I require concentration between 8 and 9 p.m. This is class. Uh, so, More concentration. So, so is it like uh, you can concentrate better from, nine, from 8 to 9? Is that what you mean? Or you find it difficult to concentrate from 8 to 9? No, I require um, you're, you're required concentration. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. I, okay. Yeah. That's right. You know, it's difficult. And I understand, by the way, I, I admire you guys and, and everybody working at this time, uh, studying at this time period, because I know that, I mean, you have your daytime jobs. And I know that after you come home, it's, it's, can be difficult. You know, you just want to have dinner. You want to, watch TV, you want to go to bed, okay, but you're making an effort to be here, and, and for that, I'm grateful, and, and, and I congratulate all of you on doing this, because it's it's not easy, I know it's not easy, also as a teacher, you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's not easy to just come and teach a class at night, sometimes I feel very tired, but well, you have to do what you have to do, uh, but I usually end at nine, okay, any later than that, mm, no, I think it's, it's a bit too much, okay? It's a bit too much, especially because I have to get up very early in the morning, so. The last one, your mind and body are sleepiest at 4 a.m. That's when you are sleepiest. This is why it's not a good idea to stay up studying all night, okay? Well, we're probably going to skip on this one, but yeah, this is the time I get up every morning. I get up at 4 a.m every morning except on weekends um but what about you what time do you usually get up during the weekdays do you get up at four do you get up earlier than that or do you get up er later than that if you do well lucky you but uh what time do you usually get up in the morning before you go to work anna cecilia hi teacher me hi. too i get up early uh, for a.m. At 4 a.m. All, all okay. day, um, except, uh, como dice, except, except, except the weekends. Except on the weekends. Okay. And mm -hmm. what time do you get up on the weekends? Um, nine. 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 Okay. Nine all right. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. You're a late riser over the weekends. Okay. All right, good. Thank you, Ana Cecilia. Well, okay. that's that's the way it is. Uh, everybody, thank you for your participation. Um, let's uh, continue. We don't have much time, but um, we're going to try to work a little bit on the grammar section, and uh, that's a lot of co conversation we did right now, reading and conversation. And also, I've just learned some vocabulary, which is a good thing. 
Okay, learning vocabulary is always good. Um, lesson objective 4.0. By the end of this lesson, participants will be able to understand and use reduced time clauses. Now, what are reduced time clauses? They're actually pretty easy to use. Okay, so don't worry about this. Sounds complicated, but it's not. So reduced time clauses. Now, take a look at this. Sorry. Notice how these clauses show time relationships. If the subject of the sentence doesn't change, clauses with right, clauses with before, right before, after, right after, and while can be reduced. Examples, you can say, after I finish my workout, I head to the office. You can also say, after finishing my workout, I head to the office. Now, take a look at this. This is important. If the subject of the sentence doesn't change, for example, you have it here, and I'm going to show it to you. You have two clauses. Um, you can say, after I finish my workout, comma, I head to the office. So there are two clauses in this sentence. Clause number one is, after I finish my workout. Clause number two is I head to the office. Now, what do they have in common? They share the same subject and the subject is I. The subject of the first uh, clause is I and the subject of the second clause is also I, okay? So we have something important here. Both clauses in the sentence share the same subject. They have the same subject. So when this happens, you can reduce the time expression or the time clause. And the time clause is this one. It begins with after. So you can say after, instead of saying I finish, you can say finishing, fin finishing. Yeah, okay. Let me copy this. I don't wanna type it. <laughs> so after finishing my workout, I head to the office. This is a reduced time clause. Okay, remember you can only do this when the subject in the time clause is the same as the subject in the main clause, okay? Both clauses have to have the same subject. Another example, while I take my lunch break at work, I often sneak a five minute nap. You can also say, while taking my lunch break at work, I often sneak a five minute nap. You can do this, again, because you have the same subject in both clauses. You have I and I, same subject. So you can reduce the time clause. After, sorry, while taking my lunch break at work, I often sneak a five minute nap, okay? So you have to use the ing form of the verb. That's very important. You see, after finishing, while taking. Next example. I am not very approachable right after I wake up. Or you can say, I am not very approachable right after waking up. Okay, again, both clauses share the same subject and the subject is I. Therefore, you can reduce the time clause. You say right after and then a gerund, waking up. That's the idea. So you can use uh, the gerund form, the ing form, after, before, right before, after, after, right after, and, of, and also after the word while. Again, you can say after I finish or after finishing, while I take or while taken, right after I wake up or right after waking up. Okay? However, okay, and here's the exception to this rule. However, other time clauses cannot usually be reduced, okay? So you can reduce those time clauses that begin with before, after, or while. You can also, it can also be right before, right after, and while. But there are some others, like the ones here, that cannot be reduced. You cannot reduce them. Ever since, that's one. You don't say, ever since I was a kid. You cannot say, ever since being a kid. That doesn't make sense, okay? So you cannot reduce it. Ever since I was a kid, I have had trouble getting up early. 
As soon as I get up in the morning, I race off to the gym. This is another one. If it begins with as soon as, you cannot reduce it. You cannot say as soon as uh, getting up in the morning. But it doesn't sound natural and it, it grammatically it doesn't make sense either. So the next one, until I've had my coffee, I'm such a grouch. So you cannot say after having my coffee. Sorry, after having cup, I misread this. Until having my coffee, okay? You cannot say that. Until having my coffee, I'm such a grouch. That will be incorrect. People don't talk like that. Whenever you have to work with numbers, plan to do it around noon, okay? Whenever, that's another one. If if it begins, if the time clause begins with whenever, you can't reduce the time clause. You cannot say whenever working with numbers. No, it doesn't sound well. No, sorry, I made a mistake. It doesn't sound good, okay? Um, I've been a night person from the moment I started college. From the moment, that's another one. You cannot say I have been a night person from the moment starting college. No, don't use it. So remember, you can only reduce it by using the ing form of the verb after the words before, right before, after, right after, and while. But if you're using ever since, as soon as, until, whenever, or from the moment, don't reduce it because it is not correct. Before we continue, do you have any questions about uh, the grammar that we have studied here? Any questions? No questions? Miguel. Uh, sure. Um, then uh, we can reduce the clause only when mm, when we use uh, before, after, and, and while. Mm -hmm. only. Exactly. But in the other cases, no. Yeah, that's the idea. But, I mean, but again, you can reduce it when they begin with before, after, or while, or right before, right after, and while, and also when both clauses share the same subject. If it's a different subject, it is not possible, okay? For example, let's see. Um, if we say, uh, imagine after the teacher, for example, um, says goodbye, I go to bed. Okay, so this is a case in which this is not possible. Why? Because the subject in the first clause is not the same as the subject in the second clause. In the first clause, the subject is the teacher. In the second clause, the subject is I. So the subject is not the same. You can't say something like, after saying goodbye, I go to bed. If you, you can say it, but the meaning of the sentence is different. When you say, after saying goodbye, I go to bed, it sounds like you say goodbye and then you go to bed, not the teacher. So. That's the thing. You can only reduce, you know, these time clauses when the subject in both clauses is shared, when the subject is the same in both clauses. So be careful right there. Again, you can say the sentence and it's grammatically correct. You can say, after saying goodbye, I go to bed, but the meaning is different from the other sentence. After the teacher says goodbye, I go to bed. In the first one, is the teacher who says goodbye. In the second one, it is you who says goodbye and then goes to bed. So you have to be careful right there. So both conditions have to meet in order for you to reduce the time clause. Miguel. OK, teacher. Um, in the case, the subject um, can be uh, the subject you and two person. You. Let's see. Let me think. If I say, 
normally this doesn't happen because you don't you don't talk about people like that. It's it's normally used with I. If you notice the examples, all of them use I, but you that will be very, very unusual. And I will also say that it's probably not let me think. Mm, even finding an example is kind of hard because this is very, very unusual. Let me think. Uh, no, nobody. I've never heard this, to be honest with you. <laughs> never with you. Imagine like after you finish having lunch, you always take a nap. After eating lunch, you always take a nap. I guess it's possible. You, you can say, yeah, I mean, it is possible, but but kind of unusual. Say after you finish lunch, you always take a nap. Okay. So you say after finishing lunch, or instead of finish, let's say eat after you eat or better have. Okay. After having lunch, you always take a nap. Take a nap possible grammatically correct i guess but very unusual always having lunch you always take a nap mostly it is used when the subject is i not you but i guess it is possible but again you will you will not hear people you know talking like this very often all right um what time is it 8:52 wow Okay, um, any other questions about this? <clears throat> no more questions? Then we're going to do an exercise. <clears throat> now, take a look. Which of these time clauses can be reduced? Which ones cannot be reduced? If it can be reduced, just tell me it can be reduced and it will show an R. If it cannot be reduced, and then it will show an N, okay, meaning not, okay. So what about the first one? Ever since I can remember, I've been a night owl. So you have the time clause ever since I can remember. Question is, is it possible for you to reduce it? Can you have a reduced time clause in here or not? So uh, you don't have to do it. You just have to tell me if it is possible to reduce it or not. So if you if you know the answer, please raise your hand. Is it possible to reduce the time clause? Or is it not? What do you think? Gabriela? I think it's possible to reduce. It's possible. Yeah. OK. Um, well, let's go back to the previous slide. You have uh, ever since, right? Ever since is one of those um, safe phrases at the beginning of a time clause that indicate that uh, it is not possible to reduce it. So remember, right? However, other time clauses cannot, you cannot usually be reduced like ever since, as soon as, until, whenever, and from the moment. And in this case, you have ever since. So in this case, it's actually, no, it cannot be reduced. But thank you for your participation. What about mm -hmm. number two? My mother races off to work right after I leave for school. Okay. So my mother races off to work right after I leave for school. Is it possible to reduce uh, the time clause, Elizabeth del Carmen? It's, it's not possible. Reduce Why not? Because uh, in the first clause, uh, the person is my mother or third person. Mm -hmm. And the second clause is the first person. That's me, right. Exactly. The subject uh in the time clause is not the same as the subject in the main clause therefore you cannot reduce it okay you cannot say my mother races off to work right after leaving for school i mean your your mother probably doesn't go to school okay or maybe medical school 
but uh, if you if you if you say it like that, the, the the meaning of the sentence will completely change. Okay, so that's why you have to be careful. You can only say my mother races off to work right after I leave for school because the subject is not the same. You cannot reduce the time clause. Thank you very much. Okay. What about the third one? Before he starts his day, my father has coffee and reads the paper. Is it possible to reduce the time clause in this case or not possible? What do you think? Gabriel? I think it is possible. It is possible. It can be reduced. That is correct. Yeah, you can reduce it. Before he starts his day, my father has coffee and reads the paper. Why is it possible? Because you have in both clauses, it's the same people, the same person, he and my father. They both refer to the same person. And also it begins with before. So you can say before starting his day, my father has coffee and reads the paper. Okay. So thank you. What about uh, number four? As soon as I get up in the morning, I drink a large glass of water. Elizabeth. And number four, uh, hmm? it's not possible because is as soon as exactly it begins the time clause begins with as soon as therefore it is not possible okay thank you very much okay um what about number five number five Ana Cecilia Rodriguez I Can always listen so, sorry, I always listen to my MP3 player while I run. It's possible, teacher, because the first clause, the first person, and second clause, the third person too. Okay. And also because you have while. So, yeah, totally. Thank you. And Cecilia, that is correct. I always listen to my MP3 player while I run. You can say while running. Now you can tell this is an old book, right? Nobody uses MP3 players anymore. <laughs> you use your phone. Okay. So um, thank you. Okay, that, that is correct. Very good. What about number six? I usually uh, break up for the afternoon after I eat lunch. So what about that one? Okay. What about that one? Byron. It's possible. It is possible, okay? So you can reduce it. That is correct. Very good. I usually per cup the afternoon after I eat lunch. Gabriel. I just have a question. What is the meaning of per cup? You feel happier. You feel more lively, okay? That's the meaning of per cup. You, you, you feel in a better mood, okay? That's the meaning of it. Got it. Thank Mm -hmm. You're welcome. You feel more cheerful, okay, more optimistic. So, yeah, I usually perk up. <laughs> you feel happier uh, for the afternoon after I eat lunch. Yeah, me too, <laughs> okay, but I also feel sleepier. That's a problem. So, um, what about number seven? Whenever I drink coffee after three, I have trouble falling asleep. How about this one? Is it possible to reduce it? If you know, please raise your hand. Elisa? Uh, it's not possible to reduce. Not possible. Mm -hmm. Begin whenever. No. Exactly. It begins with whenever. Okay, so it, it shares this the same subject, but it begins with whenever. Therefore, you know you don't reduce it. So <clears throat> whenever I drink coffee after three, I have trouble falling asleep. You cannot say whenever drinking coffee at three. I have trouble falling asleep. That will be incorrect. Doesn't sound natural. Okay. And the last one. Okay. I always have breakfast at a local cafe before I start classes for the day. If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Elizabeth. Okay. Elizabeth is on fire. So, okay, she's participating a lot. Okay. It's right, teacher. The first uh -huh. time. <laughs> ah, the last one. Uh, it's possible to reduce because it's before and the second close. 
Mm -hmm. You're using before, and also the subject is the same in both clauses. It's I and I, and also you're using before. I always have breakfast at a local cafe before starting classes for the day. Very good. Okay, nice. Tomorrow we will continue with this. Um, there is a little bit more information and more exercises that we have to go through. Uh, it's going to be worth it. Okay, it's, it's a bit more practice. Um, before we or before leaving, okay, we have to go through the attendance list one more time. So um, if you hear your name, please let me know. Is Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador? Yes, I am here. Okay, welcome, Cristina. And uh, Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Are you online, Wendy? Apparently not, okay. Okay, um, everybody, remember, work on the platform, okay? We're supposed to uh, complete section number four, okay, um, this week, and also the final exam. Remember, we're going to cover also the final, we're going to give a, a say, um, feedback on the final exam on Thursday, okay, when we finish the level. Remember, we just have four more cl uh, classes, and uh, always try to be online, Remember, okay, every minute that you are online counts for the completion of this level. So please, please, please um, stay in class as long as possible and don't miss any classes. As usual, thank you very much and uh, I will see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night, teacher. Thank you. Good night. Take care. Good night. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.